Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Muddy River Catfishing. Today we're out here on, of course, one of my favorite pieces of water, just my little stretch of river that I like to fish, and uh, it's the middle of January, we're going to try to catch some winter catfish, see how it goes. I've tried my luck at the lake a few times, and we've caught one or two, but I know this stretch of water pretty well, so hopefully we'll catch something. But anyways, people ask me about the rig that I use. And they want to know how I tie it, and and uh, so I'm going to show you that here right now. So the first thing I do is I take my weight, and I I use a two ounce bank sinker. It seems appropriate for the for the current that I fish in. It's not it's not too swift here, but it's it's heavy enough that keeps my bait where I want it. So the way I tie this, it's a polymer knot, and if if you know that knot already, you can. I just skip ahead but if you don't this is how you tie it you just make a loop like this it's really simple knot and it's very strong make a little loop then you thread it through your the eye of your weight just like that then you do a little overhand knot like the one we tie our shoes with just like that you pull that down onto your weight. Then you take the loop that's left, open it up, and you put your weight through it. Pull it back around, just like that. And then you you pull your main line to tighten up that slack. And you want to make sure your main line and your tag line are on the same side of that loop. When you pull it tight, it'll clench down. And there's your knot. That's a polymer knot. So that's what I do with my weight. Then I'll come up maybe about two and a half feet or so. And I make another loop. Then I take my hook. This is a it's a five aught uh, gamakatsu octopus hook the way I tie this on there is I just make the loop and slide it through then we'll do the same little operation do an overhand knot just like this and pull that through down to the to the eye Open up the open up the loop. Put your hook through, and then pull it down tight. And that ties it directly to the line. Okay, now I want to make a leader for this. So what I do here is I just pinch my line so that it's even, and I follow it back. However long I decide my light, my uh, my leader line should be, and that's about what I like right there. Then I just wrap it around these two fingers like this, put the hook through there, and then I pull that tight. And that's how I make my leader. And that's the rig that I'm using. get baited up and cast it out. Uh, I got some cut bait here. Pretty frozen. Hadn't really thought out. But we're going to try it out. Let's make sure those, those scales come off the tip of that hook there. Alright.
All right, now uh, <laughs> here's a little story that I want to tell you about uh, about this this uh, knot that or this rig that I'm using. My dad is the one who taught me how to fish, and the the rig that he taught me was the Carolina rig. And if you guys know that one, you've got your sinker on top and and the weight and the hook on the very bottom and that's the basic idea of it anyways and when I first found this little stretch of river that's what I would use I'd use the the Carolina rig and I'd fish it and you know I'd have it'd be kind of hit and miss I'd catch a fish here and there and that, but I'd catch a lot of turtles for whatever reason and one day I was thinking to myself, you know, what if I just reverse it, put the hook up on top and the weight on bottom and uh, see how, you know, how that works. Maybe I have better results. Well, sure enough, I, cha I did that modification and I had so much more success with it. And uh, <laughs> so I guess uh, after, uh, after uh, a time fishing with it, I decided to bring my dad out here. He had never been out here before. And we were getting rigged up and ready to cast out. And I kind of glanced over at my dad. And I noticed he was tying up the Carolina rig. Well, as respectful as I could from a, from a son to his father, I, I wanted to tell him about the Kentucky rig that I was using. So, uh, so I approached him and I said, you know, Dad, I... I know you're the one who taught me how to fish, and I know uh, I know you've been using that rig for a lot of years. But if I could make a, a suggestion uh, to try this rig that I'm going to use, I'll show you how to tie it. And before I could finish, he kind of stopped me and said, "Eh, I've been fishing for longer than you've been been around, and you know all the good stuff that dads tell you." But uh, so I left it alone. I rigged it up, and uh, we both cast it out about the same time. And I'd say within about five minutes, I caught my first blue cat, probably about a five pounder. And I look over at my dad, and his rod sitting there real still. And I take it off the hook, and I bait up, cast back out, and about five ten minutes later, I have my second fish. <laughs> and my dad's sitting there with nothing going on, you know. And uh, so the third, by the time I caught the third fish. <laughs> My dad finally looks over at me and he says, um, so, uh, what's that rig you were telling me about? <laughs> so I showed him how I rigged up that Kentucky rig like I just showed you how to tie. But that's my little story about the Carolina versus the Kentucky. But uh, don't get me wrong, the Carolina rig is a good rig and I use it as well. I'll use it in different fishing scenarios than this one, more at the lake than here at the river. But... Uh, just wanted to share that story with you so we're gonna sit here and see if we get any bites and uh, we'll get back to you <laughs>